Hey guys, welcome to class. I'm really excited to share these press handstand drills with you. These are the drills that helped me discover my first press handstands. And whether you are learning handstands or learning the press handstand, these drills are really going to help you along your journey and bring more awareness to the connection of all these moving parts because these tend to get a little bit overwhelming, but once you have an awareness and understanding of the foundations, the pieces of the puzzle come together and click. And a lot of the foundations that go into handstands and press handstands translate into other different mindful movements of your practice. Before we get started, please hit the like button and subscribe to this page and drop a comment below if these drills helped you. Some things that you are going to need for today's practice are a pair of socks, because we're gonna be sliding around with them, a pair of yoga blocks, because we're going to be needing them throughout this practice, which will be part flow and part strengthening, conditioning, and compression drills. So whenever you're ready, let's get started in a child's pose. Walk your fingertips out long. Let the belly hang heavy. And take these first few moments to settle and arrive. Perhaps set an intention or a dedication. And although this particular practice may be confronting in certain moments, always practice a level of ahimsa, kindness to yourself. Find some joyful moments in this practice. And don't be attached to a certain outcome. Allow your journey to unfold naturally. Be honest with yourself, but never critical. Trust your process and know that if anything feels off, you can always back off or take this child's pose to catch up with your breath. We're creating this soft compression Take a deep inhale through your nose and an audible exhale out through your mouth. Deep inhale and long exhale. We're gonna make our way into a tabletop position. But on your way there, I want you to tuck your chin towards your chest, and round down through the upper thoracic spine, creating this shoulder protraction, which is an essential element in all of our handstand and press handstand work. Walk your hands so that the wrists are directly underneath your shoulders and that your knees are directly underneath your hips. And circle over the wrists Wrist mobility and flexibility are essential ingredients into handstands and press, pressing your handstands. Grip the floor with your fingertips and your inner knuckles. And try to move from your hips this time 
exploring different directions. Then turn the palms, fingers pointing towards you, and make sure your stance is wide enough so that it's shoulder distance apart. And just lean back to whatever you are comfortable with. And if you'd like to have an extra challenge, walk your feet towards the back of the mat and come up into your plank pose. Engage the glutes and drive your heels towards the back of the mat. We always tend to forget to use our legs in our plank pose. We always underestimate the power of our legs when we should really be using them to support us throughout these movements. Then lower the knees onto the earth. From here, we'll take our first moment of flying integration. Walk your knees and frame your knees with your hands. And you want to be able to draw a half circle from one pinky, your left pinky, all the way to your right pinky. Create this ulnar deviation with your hands so that you're opening a jar on each hand. Take an inhale to prepare. On your exhale, drive your knees up high towards your collarbone, sit your hips down low. Separate the shoulder blades by protracting we're here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, on one, slowly lower down your knees. Great job. I know we went right into our core work just then. So let's get into some wrist cars. Cars stand for controlled articular rotations. And these are going to really work on developing our mobility in our wrists for all of your press handstand work. Fingertips are pointing down towards the mat. And you want this movement to come from the wrist and not from the fingertips. Turn your hands towards the middle. Then bring them up. Bring them out to the side. And bring the fingers down. Bring them up, bring them to the side, and down. We're going to switch directions. Bring it up, bring it to center, bring it down to the side, bring it to the other side, and bring it up. Good job, guys. Press your hands down onto the mat, and tuck all ten toes behind you, and we're going to step into our downward facing dog. Take a moment to pedal out through the feet. And stay active in the arms here. Elevate your shoulders towards your ears. Press the ground away, creating that pushing motion that we do with our handstands. Lower the knees to hover. Inhale, lift the heels. Spring your body forward, let the spine unfurl piece by piece. High plank pose. And take one to five push-ups here. Remember to take your push-ups on the exhale and to engage your glutes. Keep your gaze a little bit forward and down. And on your exhale, for one, two, three, four, and five, find your high plank, and we're gonna lower down for five seconds onto our bellies for five, four, keep pushing the ground away, three, two, and one. From here, take your left hand at the 10 o'clock direction and your right hand at the two o'clock direction for oscillating cobra. On your inhale, lift up through the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades down the back body. Engage your glutes. And on the exhale, lower. Inhale, rise. And exhale, lower. Inhale, rise. 
And exhale, lower, working out through our back. Inhale, rise. This time, pause at the top. And exhale to release. Bring your hands behind you, thumbs pointing up towards the ceiling as we prepare for locust pose. On your next inhale, drive up through the arms. Remember to squeeze your shoulder blades down the back body, then lift up through the legs. Engage your glutes and find your elevation for five, four, three, two, on one, release. Bring your blocks towards you and place them at any height of your preference, shoulder distance apart, and walk your knees in. We're going to come into these prayer puppy drops. Walk your elbows onto the blocks, knees underneath the hips, and drop your chest down towards the earth. Hands can be in prayer or any position you find is comfortable. We want to always open up the shoulders before any kind of handstand work and press handstand work. And throughout this practice, we are going to ebb and flow through dynamic movement and these moments of calm. And we'll linger here for five long breaths. On your next breath, draw your hands in front of you and walk your knees towards the blocks. Move one block off to the side and we're going to take the other block onto its lowest setting just in front of your mat. Make your way onto your belly and we are going to extend our hands so that our hands are almost like they're karate chopping the block. Drop your forehead. One of the important components that we want to develop in our handstand work is our straight arm scapular strength. And we're gonna move from the shoulders here, so begin to create an activation. Think of a 10% activation onto the block. And then we're gonna increase that activation into 30%. Then give it 50% of full effort, 70%. And as you reach your full effort to 100%, imagine as if you're trying to chop this block. Move from the shoulders and not from the hands. Push the block down with your shoulders for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Awesome work, guys. Take a gentle cobra pose for a moment. Cobra or sphinx. Gently pull your collarbones and heart forward. Shine your heart forward. Whenever you're ready, press into your downward facing dog. Inhale, the right leg reaches up towards the sky. Bend the right leg and use this left leg as a spring as you step that right foot to the outside of right hand. Find your low runner's lunge here. We want to create some movement as we open up through the hips. 
Our hip flexors are absolutely essential to making our legs feel lighter. Then lower the left knee onto the earth. Plant the left hand down as you twist open towards the right. Inhale. Then we're gonna take an active twisted lizard. So drive that left heel in towards your left glute. And if you'd like, cactus open up through that right arm. Remember to stay active in that left foot as you drive it towards your glute for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, on one. Shift your hips back into your Ardha Hanumanasana half splits. Create some activation in that right quad. Flex that right foot towards you. Keep your spine nice and long. Try to flick the tailbone up towards the sky. And tuck all of your left toes underneath you and rise up into your modified pyramid pose. Keep flexing that right foot. And we wanna focus on this fold of the right hip. One of the most important ingredients in the press handstand is this folding and connection of the lower belly and the thigh, working on that active compression. And shift the weight forward and drag your left toes to the outside of left hand. Inhale takes you up into active yogi squat. Try to find some buoyancy in the legs as we warm up the legs. Drive the knees apart from one another and use your arms for counterbalance. Keep your glutes engaged. Maybe do a light bounce. Exhale, straighten out through the legs, hands come to heart center. Inhale to reach your arms up towards the sky. Exhale, sit the hips low, active squat. Inhale to plant the palms, bend through the arms. Step the left foot back, followed by the right. Gaze forward and take a full push up. Drop knees, lower the forearms. Inhale, pulls your way into upward facing dog. And exhale, cruise back into downward facing dog. And that was our first vinyasa, our first awakening yoga vinyasa of the day. Inhale, the left leg reaches up towards the sky. Bend that left leg and step that left foot to the outside of left hand. Runner's lunge. You can try to create some movement here, opening up through the left hip. Pull your collarbones forward and shine your heart through. Lower down that right knee, plant the right palms and twist open towards the left, inhale. On your exhale, drive that right heel towards your right glute, then cactus open that left arm. Roll the right shoulder blade onto the right arm and stay active in that right leg for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, on 1. Shift your hips back into Ardha Hanumanasana half splits. Begin to create that activation in the left quad. Try to flip your tailbone up towards the sky. Tuck all right toes in and rise up into your modified pyramid pose. Again, focus on the fold of that left hip onto the left thigh. And 
Then bend through that left leg as you drive the right foot to meet the outside of right hand. Inhale, active squat. Exhale, straighten out through the legs, hands come to heart center. Inhale to reach your arms up towards the sky, engage the glutes. Exhale, sit the hips low, active squat. Inhale, plant the palms, look forward. Step the right foot back, followed by the left. On your exhale, take a full push-up. Drop knees, followed by the forearms. Inhale, pull your way into upward facing dog. And exhale, cruise back downward facing dog. So we're gonna create more heat in the body through three rounds of the Awakening Yoga Surya Namaskar A. And that movement that we did just earlier is exactly the same, except take this opportunity to either hop, step, or float into your active squat. And when you're hopping or floating, try to slow the descent as much as you can. Slowing down the descent, otherwise known as focusing on the negatives, is really going to build strength for your press handstands. Take an inhale to lift the heels, bend through the legs, bottom of the exhale, step or float feet to the outside of your hands. Inhale, active squat. Exhale, straighten up through the legs, hands meet at heart center. Inhale to reach your arms up. Exhale, sit the hips low, active squat. Inhale to plant the palms. On your exhale, step or float into your vinyasa. Drop knees, followed by the forearms. Inhale, pulls your way into upward facing dog. Exhale, cruise back, downward facing dog. No pause, one breath per movement. Inhale to lift the heels, bend the legs. Bottom of the exhale, step or float feet to the outside of your hands. Inhale, active squat. Exhale, straighten out through the legs, hands come to heart center. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, sit the hips low, active squat. Inhale to plant the palms. On your exhale, step or float, vinyasa. Drop knees. Followed by the forearms. Inhale, pulls your way into upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Last round, inhale to lift the heels. Bend the legs, bottom of the exhale. Step or float feet to the outside of your hands. Inhale, active squat. Exhale, straighten out through the legs, hands come to heart center. Inhale, reach your hands up. Exhale, sit the hips low, active squat. Inhale to plant the palms. Bottom of the exhale, step or float into your vinyasa. Drop knees, followed by the forearms. Inhale, pose your way into upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Take five full breaths in your downward facing dog. From here, we are going to take a 10 count journey to the top of the mat. And you can either tiptoe your way so that your hands land just in between your wrists, or take this moment as an opportunity to play with your handstands. You could take 10 hops, hold a handstand if you wish, but just use this opportunity to really find some joy in your movement. As you walk your toes in between your wrists, please make sure to stabilize through the shoulders. That's really going to help build shoulder stability in any of your pressed handstand work. Take an inhale to prepare. Your journey to a forward fold top of the mat begins for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
on one, fold forward. Try to keep your legs bent in this forward fold. You don't want to lose that connection between your lower belly and your thighs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, roll up your spine, one vertebrae at a time, piece by piece. Tuck your tailbone and find Tadasana. On your next inhale, reach your arms up towards the sky. And exhale, cactus open up through the arms. Hands meet at heart center. From here, take your Utkatasana chair pose. Sit your hips towards the back of the mat. Try to bring your tailbone down and under. Hands can be at heart center, or you can reach your arms up overhead. On your next breath, come up high onto your toes and slowly lower. Keep driving the knees up towards the collarbones. Lower, 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 and lower. Plant your arms in front of you and bring your knees up high up onto the triceps for Bakasana. Shift your weight forward, ground down through the fingertips, protract through the shoulders, and drive your heels towards your glutes. Hold it here for three, two, on one. Lower the feet down and roll onto your butt. Make your way into your Ardha Navasana low boat pose. Now we're gonna build on some core conditioning work by pulsing up from low boat, and on the exhale, coming up to high boat. And we're gonna pulse like this for 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, on 1. Plant your heels down and find a soft bridge pose. You're doing great, guys. Slowly lower down the hips onto the mat. Now you have two options here. We're gonna come into a hollow body shape. This is the shape that we want to resemble in a handstand. You could either grab your block, which is going to be your weighted object, overhead, or you don't have to use your block. We need to develop straight arm scapular strength and using a block in the practice helps us develop that strength. When you're ready, bring your arms overhead, whether or not you have a block. Take an inhale to prepare. On your exhale, lift up through the upper back, then lift up through the legs. Imprint your lower back so that it's touching the mat. Engage your core for 10. Nine, eight, seven. Keep elevating the shoulders. Six, five, four, three, two, on one. Release. Great job, guys. That was not easy. Find your soft bridge pose, creating a nice counter. Lower your hips down onto the earth. And we're gonna take a second round of that hollow body. Doing this on a consistent basis really helped me develop all of the recruitment in my handstand practice. And this is going to really benefit you as well. Reach your arms overhead. Remember to elevate your shoulders so that your arms and triceps are 
almost touching your ears. Then imprint through the lower back. Lift your toes up. Lengthen out, lengthen out for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, on one, lower down. Take another supported bridge pose. And lower down your hips. Extend your left leg out and reach your right leg up towards the sky. C curve your chest and your upper thoracic spine. And we're gonna take 10 pulses. Use your hands to ground down onto the floor as we pulse for 10, nine, eight, keep reaching out through the toes, six, five, four, three, two, on one, switch legs. Take a moment here to integrate yourself. Then on your inhale, C curve the chest up and pulse for 10, nine, eight. Keep working that deep core muscles, the lower belly. Five, four, three, two, on one. Hug your knees towards your chest. And rock side to side. Then I want you to extend your legs up towards the sky. Now we are going to work on building active compression. You can look at compression as the ability to bring your legs up high towards your torso, or up towards your collarbones. And this is one of the most important components in pressing your handstands. So we're gonna do some shaping drills here. Extend your arms up in front of you. You can move your weighted object to the side. And I want you to think of this connection between the lower belly and your thighs. You always wanna maintain that touch, that connection there. On your inhale, begin to squeeze your legs towards your collarbones, keeping that compression between the lower belly and thighs. You could keep your legs bent. And almost as if you're trying to Exit your way through a tunnel. Keep your legs really low as you extend the legs out. Keep that compression of the lower belly and thigh. And we're gonna do four more of these. Inhale to compress. Use your core to move your body forward and back. And bring your legs up towards the sky. Three more. Go at your own pace as well. Remember, think about that connection. One last. Then you're gonna extend your legs and open them up a little bit wider. And we're going to almost resemble a straddle shape. And this is the pressing shaping drills that we are going to do in the straddle shape. And it's gonna be the same motions here. Use your core to lift your body up. Stay active in the feet and slowly lower. Four more just like this. Try to move with the control. And roll yourself up towards the top of the mat. Extend both legs out. And maintaining that foundational information of 
keeping the lower belly almost as if it's glued to the thighs. And if you can't do this with straight legs, don't worry, you could do this with bent legs as well, just as long as you're keeping this connection. So we're gonna resemble the motions of pressing into a handstand. Take your arms and shoulders into external rotation, and then you're gonna press your feet and arms and shoulders forward. Go at 100% effort for 10, nine. Think about that connection, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, on one. Great job, guys. Take a moment to catch up with your breath. And connecting to your foundations helps bring an awareness to what the moving parts are, again, in the press handstand. So take your legs into a wider stance, resembling more of a straddle as opposed to the middle splits. And we're gonna create that same action but this time I really want you to imagine your quads and your hamstrings are pressing onto the earth. Take an inhale to prepare. Lift your arms up and on your exhale, lower down. Keep that connection between the lower belly and thighs and push out for 10. Stay active here, active in the legs, eight, seven. Elevate the shoulder blades, six, five, four, three, two, on, one. Great job, guys. I know that's not easy. I'm gonna move here towards the long side of the mat and demo this for you. So we're gonna take um, a straddle and fold over. Finding a more active yet moment of calm. You could use your blocks to help support you in this straddle fold. Take an inhale to prepare. Lift your arms up overhead. Press the ground with your inner thighs as you fold. Create that activation. We're gonna stay here for 20 breaths, so find the depth that is appropriate for you. There is no need to push yourself beyond your edge. This could also be looked at as the pancake, and this really helps developing that compression that is required for pressing our handstands. Find a moment of calm. Connecting back to your natural breath. And play with more activation of the hamstrings pressing onto the earth, the heels digging into the earth. Five more breaths here. On your last breath, drive your legs into the earth. And slowly make your way up. Frame your right leg with your hands just outside of that right knee. 
we're going to work on developing that compression and developing strength into those hip flexors, the psoas muscles, which is going to help us throughout our quest for the press. Take an inhale to prepare. On your exhale, we're going to do 10 pulses, lifting this right leg up for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two on one maybe massage your quads this is cramp city guys so it's only normal to feel cramps throughout this process but don't let that deter you then frame your left knee this time take an inhale to prepare on your exhale, pulse it up for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, on one. Massage out those quads. And don't worry, it's totally normal to cramp. Go ahead and grab your pair of socks and your blocks. And this is meant to be a really fun portion of the class. And roll up your mat just so that you have space enough to slide around. Put on your socks. Then grab your blocks and place your blocks about shoulder width distance apart and make your way into a high plank. Engage your glutes and engage your core. On your exhale, you're going to slide your legs in between the palms. And from here, you want to create that activation with your core so that your core is pulling your legs in between the blocks. Walk your socks out. We're going to do four more of these. On your exhale, pull the socks in. Bring your feet out to plank. Engage your core to pull it in. That's three. Walk your feet up, gaze is down and forward. Exhale, drive the feet in. Walk the feet out, bring it in on the exhale. One more time for good measure. And exhale, pike it up. These sliding pike drills are awesome for bringing that core awareness into working with the hip flexors to essentially make your feet feel much lighter as you press. So we're going to come down onto our knees and bring your blocks and frame about the uh, just right below your knee. Shift your weight forward and we're going to come into these lolasana variations by using the socks in the top of our feet to bring our knees towards our collarbones and sitting the hips really low. Very similar to our shape in flying integration, but we still want to build that compression. Take an inhale to prepare. On your exhale, drive the knees towards the collarbones, then lower the feet down. Remain up high here, push through your shoulders. Exhale, draw the knees up. Lower it down. Three more times, guys. Draw the knees up and lower it down. Draw it up and lower it down. Draw it up. Hold it here for three, two, one. Slowly lower. Awesome work, guys. You're doing a great, great job. So from here, again, you're going to take um, your blocks about shoulder distance apart. 
and take your blocks at shoulder distance apart and you're going to come up onto this forward fold shape and we're going to almost come down as if we're going into the middle splits but not actually reaching that range but essentially what we want to do is slide into the socks extend the legs out make sure to pull the collarbones forward and use the power of your hip flexors so psoas and your core to pull your legs back in that's one four more times guys just like that slide them out on the inhale stay active in the legs don't be passive here and exhale drive them in inhale to drive the legs out exhale drive them in inhale drive them out and exhale drive them back in we'll do two more times of that for good measure inhale drive it out and exhale drive it in one more time guys you're doing great stick with it drive it up and exhale pull the legs in through the hip flexors good job guys you are doing awesome 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 unroll the mat and you can remove your socks and that's a really fun way to integrate into your practice um, especially if you don't have any equipment like a reformer or anything like that um, it's an awesome way to build strength awareness and to work on active flexibility to open up the hamstrings as well so from here plant your hands onto the top of the mat and your feet are just going to be about half a hand away so if you measure that measure that distance and we're going to practice some toe rolls so essentially what we want to do is we want to resemble the weight transfer from our legs to our hands when we press up into a handstand and remember to keep that connection between the lower belly and the inner thighs almost if they are glued together we're just going to take a few of these rolls so externally rotate the arms puff up through your upper thoracic spine as if your shoulders are trying to reach towards the sky as opposed to reaching in front of you take an inhale here on your exhale come up high onto the toes transfer the weight onto the hands and then roll down we're going to do five of these so four push the ground away with your shoulders puff up through the shoulders and exhale roll up high onto the toes feel the weight transferring onto your fingertips come back down again just like that go at your own pace guys we just want to get used to this feeling of transferring the weight onto our hands from our lower body two more times push 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 the ground come up high almost as if you're on your big toes and slowly lower forward fold again imagine as if the thighs are glued to the lower belly inhale to halfway lift and from here plant your palms down remember to puff up through the upper thoracic spine separating your shoulder blades almost as if you're resembling that cat position and we're going to do some wrist toe tap work here take an inhale to prepare on your exhale come up high onto the toes bring your right foot to tap your right wrist then bring your left toe to tap left wrist we'll do this for eight seven 
six, five. Keep drawing the navel in. Four, three, two, one. Great job, guys. Place your hands underneath the soles of your feet. Use your toes to give a nice massage to your wrist. Give your wrists a nice little break. And whenever this feels too much on your wrist, always, always, always find a place of release. Take breaks and honor your body. And from here, we're going to get into fun press walks. So doing press walks allows you to not only develop that active compression between the lower belly and the thighs, but it also gets you used to transferring the weight from your feet onto your hands. And we're doing this by pushing the ground away through our shoulders. We want to get our hips up as high on top of the shoulders as much as possible. And by building active compression, that becomes easier along the way. And in order to bring our hips over the shoulders, we need to use our deep core muscles, the transverse abdominis. We're going to take four rounds up and four rounds down the mat. So measure the distance between your feet and your hands by taking the half hand measurement. <laughs> so take an inhale here to prepare and you could do this with bent legs. Guys, I want you to prioritize doing this again by that gluing motion of the thighs and lower belly. And I know I have to repeat that a bunch of times, but it really, really is important. So. You want to land the feet as lightly as you can, almost as if your feet are floating away from the earth, but it really helps to visualize that lightness as well. Take an inhale here. On your exhale, drive up high onto the toes, push the ground away, draw the belly in, and float the feet in between the hands. Take an inhale to prepare. On your exhale, walk. Take several rounds of these. Again, four up and four down the mat. Think light. Remember to always glue your thighs to your lower belly. Puff up through the upper back. I remember when I first started learning these, my feet would just plump onto the ground, but in time, guys, your feet are going to feel lighter. The more you practice consistently and with awareness. Draw the navel in. Once you make your way to the back of the mat, we're going to go into our Stalder press walks as well. So you could think of this as a straddle press walk to prepare you for the straddle press if you are working on developing that. So take your, your feet wide, just wide enough so that your hips can go over your shoulders to the best of their ability. The tendency is to do this with really, really wide legs. But the problem with that is that you have to do so much more work to get your hips over your shoulders that way. So, and remember, you want to keep that connection to the lower belly. You could do this with your legs bent as well, but the same principles apply here. Take an inhale on your exhale, transfer the weight, float the feet. We're going to take four rounds up and four rounds down. So go at your own pace and have fun with this, guys. Be honest and not critical about your own process. 
And this is mainly getting us comfortable to lean our shoulders a little bit over the wrists. Use your fingertips to prevent you from falling too far forward. You don't want to lean too far forward. Don't forget to draw the navel in and land the feet lightly. Push the ground away with your shoulders. Maintaining that connection, that glue of the thighs and lower belly. Great job, guys. Let's give our wrists a little bit of a break here and come sit on your butt. And we're going to do some L sits. Don't worry, we're going to do a different kind of variation of L sits. So just take your blocks close to you for now. But I want you to frame your knees with your hands working on that compression and developing that strength into our hip flexors. Point out through the toes. On your exhale, drive the knees towards your collarbones. Hold it here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, on 1. Shake the legs out. I know that's a cooker. <laughs> but these are really going to be important for developing your awareness as you're pressing handstands. So frame your shins this time. Take an inhale to prepare. On your exhale, drive the knees up high towards the collarbones. Be active through the legs here. Hold it for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, on 1. Go ahead and massage the legs, shake out the looty. Now to add to this progression, take your blocks at the highest setting and frame the outside of your hips. Draw the elbows behind you, and we're going to lift up into a modified L shape, or a modified L sit if you wish. On your exhale, drive the hips up behind you. You can keep the feet down, or you could reach and extend the legs out for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, on, one. Good job, guys. I know these are not easy, but believe me, these drills do work. So walk into your downward facing dog. One of the most important elements to work on in learning how to lift the legs up towards the sky is to be able to control the lowers because what goes down will come up eventually. So we're gonna take five rounds of focusing on the negative here by floating our feet in between the hands. Keep your gaze between your thumbs or your wrists. And we're gonna, we are going to focus on slowing down the descent, otherwise known as the negatives. Externally rotate the shoulders, elevate the shoulders, and we'll take five rounds of floating our feet up. Lift the heels, bend the legs, Remember to slow down the float by engaging your core, drawing the navel in. Bottom of the exhale, float. Slow down the descent and step your feet back. Take four more rounds of this float. Try to get some hang time. Think light. Think really, really light, guys. Keep pushing the ground away as you lower.
One last time. And walk your hands underneath your feet. And don't worry if your feet come crashing down. It's all part of the process. Don't worry, guys. But enjoy those moments because you really experience them only once. Now, whenever you're ready, we're going to try to work on our first press handstand. You can work on whatever press handstand you wish. I'm going to do the puppy press. So I'm turning my feet in. And you want your legs wide enough so that you're still maintaining that great connection between the thigh and the lower belly. Remember, the more you walk your feet out, the harder it is to get your hips over your shoulders. And that's what's going to be really important in the press handstand. Although your shoulders are going to slightly move past your wrists towards your fingertips, you don't want them to move too far forward. You want to use your fingertips to prevent you from falling forward towards the mat. Keep your gaze between the space of your wrists and your thumbs. Puff up through the upper thoracic spine. Grip the mat with your fingertips. Gaze between the thumbs and the wrists. Squeeze the glutes. Take an inhale to bring that left leg or your right leg, whichever leg you're practicing with this puppy press. Squeeze that left heel into the left glute or whichever leg. Come up high on the right toes. As you lean forward, you are going to engage your TVA, your deep core muscles, to lift that right leg up as this left leg turns your pelvis up and over. Take another inhale. On your exhale, lean forward. Stay active in the legs. And slowly, with control, lower. And then from here, take one of your blocks and place it underneath your sacrum. Good job, guys. These drills aren't easy, but they help and any kind of growth you are looking for, whether you're developing a handstand practice or your press handstand practice. Just remember that consistency is key. You could stay here as long as you wish, or you could roll out through the wrists. And most importantly, be patient with yourself. This, this kind of work takes a lot of time and a lot of patience, but the more consistent you are, the better your process will be. The prep is always gonna, gonna be harder than the pose itself. Just remember to identify your weaknesses, whether that's wrist flexibility, mobility, straight arm, scapular strength, core strength, and work to develop those weaknesses. You wanna identify at most three, otherwise you're gonna overwhelm yourself with this process. And the best part about it is to really have fun, laugh at yourself. Growth is non-linear, so there'll be days where you nail it and some days when it doesn't really click. And that's totally okay. That's all part of this practice. And we wanna practice a level of ahimsa, non-violence and kindness to ourselves. Honor your process, and I hope these drills have helped you along your journey. And please comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I bow down to you and all of your efforts. Namaste.